Yesterday we launched our topic, yeah, standard costing. We say it's one topic we students actually like. You find it a fairly objective. Okay. Uh, today we are continuing with the same. Yesterday we covered uh, two variances, materials and labor. And our approach was to start with the total first and then we split it. Today we are going to continue with the same. And now let's speak uh, variable overhead. Variable overhead variance. So variable overhead has got the total variance. And this total variance is split into two. The expenditure variance. And also the efficiency variance. These are two variances. So the total variance, the total variance is split into expenditure and efficiency for variable variance. And that's what we are going to do. We are going to take the total variance now, first of all. So let us start with the, the total variance. Let's start with the total variance. So what is the formula? What's the formula? It's a standard variable cost. Standard variable cost. So standard variable overhead multiplied by the actual number of units. Okay. Where is this information? This information is here. This information is here. So the variable overhead, the standard for each unit is 0 0.6. Each unit that we produce, the variable overhead that it carries is 0 0.6. Zero point six. And the number of units is 48.50. So you multiply those two to find the standard. What of the actual? The actual variable value was 2.6. So you take your 48.50. Multiply by 0 0.6. So that gives us the, the standard variable overhead. And the actual is here. So that's how we get the total. So let's go. Let's go. I'll put it here. I'll stay. Standard variable overhead. Standard variable. Overhead. So I'll say. It's four for my eight fifty multiplied by zero point six. So let's go four eight fifty multiplied by point six, and we go. That minus that. There we are. Right. 
So this is a total variable rate variance. That's how we get it. This total is going to be split into expenditure and efficiency. Now the good news is that the expenditure variance, the expenditure variance for variable overhead, the expenditure variance is the same as the rate variance for labor. So when you're looking at the variable overhead, expenditure variance, the expenditure variance is the same as for labor. Standard rate minus actual rate multiplied by the actual hours. Okay. Where are these rates? The standard rate, actual rate, multiplied by the actual hours. Where are these? The standard rate, actual rate, and actual hours. Where are these? Again, we go back to the question. And you find it is in the question. You find it is in the question. You find it is in the question. So let's go. The standard rate, 0 0.3. The hour. Four, variable by eight. The actual rate is, you take two six divided by eight five. So that is how we find the actual rate. The actual rate is two six divided by eight five. That's how I find the actual rate. So now, with this information, let's come here. Standard rate, actual rate, 26 multiplied by 85. 26 by 85. Divided by the, multiply by the actual number of hours. So please, let's uh, take our calculators. Let's take our calculators. Let's take our calculators. 0 0.3 minus that multiplied by that. To avoid the rounding of error, to avoid the rounding of errors, You go, you say zero point zero point three minus two six divided by eight five. Multiply by eight five. So if you want to get away from rounding of error, we can also put your expressions like the expression like that. Expenditure variance. Are we getting a 50 address? Can you get a confirmation? OK, 
Can we get the confirmation? Okay, let's make a move to the next one, the efficiency variance. The good news is, if you know the efficiency on labor, if you have understood the efficiency on labor, it's the same here. Standard hours minus actual hours multiplied by the standard rate. Standard hours, nine, seven. Actual hours, eight, five. Standard rate, but the standard rate that you use now is one for variable overhead. How did we get 9.7? Remember how we got 9.7? Mm -hmm. Remember how we got 9.7? Let's go. The number of hours per unit is two. The number of units produced is 4.850. So what we did, is you say four eight fifty times two. Mm -hmm. Minus eight five. Minus eight five. There we are. And the whole thing multiplied by the standard rate, which is 0 Eight fifty multiplied by two minus eight five multiplied by one three. Can somebody please confirm that? So when you add up these two variances, you are reconciling to the total. You're adding, you're adding up the total. Expenditure plus efficiency give us a total variable by value. Are we okay with the variable by variances? Yes, sir. Okay. If that is okay, let's come to an interesting one, fixed overheads. Fixed overheads. We'll follow the same procedure. We'll follow the same procedure. What's the procedure? We start with the total. We start with the total. Total fixed overhead variance is standard fixed overhead cost per unit multiplied by the actual units minus actual fixed overhead cost. So where is this information coming from? Let's pick the information. Remember the standard cost card? According to the standard cost card, each unit is carrying 7.4. And the number of units produced is 4850. 
So to find the, the standard cost, the 7.4 multiply by 4850 That is how we find the the standard cost for which one for fixed overhead. So that's how we calculate it. Okay. So we can come in, that's your standard, that's the actual. So we've got that variance. The fixed, the total fixed overhead variance, total fixed overhead variance, we're going to split it. So the total fixed overhead variance will be split. Will be split into expenditure. And volume. And you notice that the volume variance will be further split into capacity and efficiency. So that is the way fixed over variance is spent. Expenditure and volume. And the volume is further split into capacity and efficiency. So that's what we want to do. So first we want to look at expenditure and volume. We want to look at expenditure and volume. Let's uh, come to expenditure variance. Let's start with expenditure. We've got a small formula here, expenditure. So the fixed overhead expenditure variance is budgeted fixed overhead minus half the fixed overhead. So if you look at the budget and the actual. What budget is this? The original budget. So for this variance, you need to look for the original budget. What was the budget that the company had? So for this variance, you need to go back to the budget. Was the budget given in this scenario? Was budget given in this scenario? Five thousand one hundred units. That was the budget. 5,100 units. 
That was the budget. And the, each unit is about 7.4. Have you all seen this 5-1? The 5-1 is here. This was the budget. And per unit is 7.4. So the budgeted fixed over it was these two figures. That's the budget. What is the actual? The actual is for the two three. For the two three. So this is how you find the expenditure. Expenditure is based on the original volume, this one. So in question, look for the budget. Okay, so that is how we get our expenditure variance. Let's just let's confirm it. So that is our expenditure variance. The other component, the other component is a volume. Let's look at the volume variance. The actual volume minus budgeted volume multiplied by the budget fixed over it per unit. So what was the budget for the company? The budget was five one. What was the actual was 4850? So 4850 minus 51 multiplied by 7.4. That's the volume variance. That is the volume variance. That is the volume variance. That is the volume variance. So for 850 minus five, one, multiplied by 7.4. Give you that figure there. So if you notice this volume variance plus the expenditure variance, they add back to the total which we have calculated already. Now let's take our volume variance and split it further. The volume variance will be split into capacity and efficiency. And the good news is efficiency uses the values, the variables that we use on lab efficiency, variable by efficiency, uses the same variables. So basically you have the variables already. You have the variables already. What are these variables? Standard hours minus actual hours by standard rate. The standard hours are still the same ones that we use on labor. Actual hours are the same ones. But the standard rate, you're going to use the rate for fixed overhead. Now, some of you are saying, where is the 3.7? A is a 3.7. Let's take here. The 3.7 is here. If you look at the fixed overheads, yes, per unit is 7.4, but per hour is 3.7. So 3.7 multiplied by 2 is what gives the 7.4. But the standard rate that you're interested in 
is 3.7 per hour. Three point seven per hour. Okay, let us now look at the you answer the way it looks. Fixed overheads. So here we are. So the efficiency variance is 97 minus 85 multiplied by 3.7. So this is the efficiency variance under fixed overheads. What of uh, the capacity? The capacity variance. How do you work out the capacity variance? The answer, actual capacity minus budget capacity multiplied by standard rate. The actual capacity was 8,500 hours that worked. The budget was 5,1, which was budget units multiplied by two. So this was the budget capacity. So the actual capacity we use was 8.5, but the budget was 10.2. So we failed to use the capacity. That is why we are saying the capacity variance is what? And this. So our capacity, our ability to utilize the capacity was adverse. Why? It's because we had a budget, an allowance of 10.2. But only used eight five. That is why it is adverse. And these are hours, that is why you're using the standard rate per hour. Okay. Now we have These are our cost variances. And when you add up the two, the efficiency and the capacity, these two, they will add back to your volume variance. We're going to make a move to price. So we're done with cost variances. Let's move to price. How do we estimate the, this, the sales price variances? The sales price variances, there's two of them. There's two of them. What are those? That's the price, the sales price. And sorry, here we are. The price variance for so the sales variances, we have the price variance and the volume variance, these two. And if you look at the formula, the formula says actual price minus budget price will cover the actual volume. So let us look for these items. Where is the actual price? Where is the budget price? Where is the actual volumes? We go again to standard cost card. So on the standard cost card, we've got the budget price. The budget price of 20. And the actual, we sold nine, we sold for 
850 items. And total revenue raised was 95,600. So you divide this. Divide that by that. We divide those two to find the actual. Now, when you divide, you may get decimal. So we can run away again. You can get around uh, the issue of the decimals by Let's see how we can get around that issue. Yes, so we can get around it like this. Let's get around it. We go. The actual price, you say 95,600 divided by 4,850. Minus the budget, which is 20. So we put like that. You put like that. You put that. And you multiply by the number of units. So you can put it this way to avoid rounding of error. You can put it this way. Okay. So that's your price variance, sales price variance. Volume, actual volume, minus budget volume, multiplied by the budget profit, the unit. The actual volume, less budget volume, multiplied by the actual profit, the unit. In marginal costing system, we don't use budget profit, use budget contribution per unit. So this is how we find the sales variances. So now, after calculating all these variances, what do you do? You prepare an operating statement. A statement which reconciles your actual profit and budget profit. So we go, we have an operating statement. We start with the budget profit. By now you remember that the, our budget was 5,100 units. By now you remember that the, in our budget for this year, we budgeted to do how many units? 5,100. And each unit, six. When you multiply, you get 8,600. Then you bring in the sales volume variance, which was negative. So you put it here. Sales price, which was negative, you put it there. That's the first part of your reconciliation. Then you, you bring in the rest of the cost variances broken down. You bring in the rest of cost variances broken down. Cost variances, material price, and material usage. Material price, And material usage, labor rate, and efficiency. 
variable overhead, expenditure, and efficiency. Fix overhead, expenditure, then the volume is split into efficiency and capacity. So the negative variances will come in as negatives. Favorable variances will come in as positives. And when you start from here and you add up all these figures, all these figures, you're going to come up with these ones. So we take the budget trophy and bring in all the variances. We are supposed to reconcile to an actual profit of 24,100. Twenty four thousand one hundred. So this is what an operating statement look like. The simple statement which we use to explain the difference between the budgeted and active profit. Now you are saying, where is this figure from twenty four thousand one hundred, and have we reconciled? Have we reconciled? Is the actual profit really 24.1? Does it agree? The answer is you come here. The same standard post fund. What do you do? Here's what you do you take your sales, less the material cost, less your labor cost. Less your variable overhead, less your fixed overhead. We're supposed to get that figure. So I want you to take your calculators now. Take your calculators, all of you, and you log in 95.6, and you start subtracting all these. Let's find out what is the answer. Could somebody please work out the answer for us? Anyone can answer? Four thousand one hundred. So, according to this information, and now when you come to operating statement, let us see what has happened. When you come to operating statement, let's see what has happened. Yes, it agrees. So, when you take your budgeted profit, when you took your budgeted profit. 
and you bring in all the variances, both the sales variances and the cost variances. Once you bring in all these, we are reconciling to the reported actual profit. It's agreeing with the reported actual profit. Okay, so this is what you mean by the reconciliation statement. Okay, is the operating statement all right? Okay, so what remains now is question practice to practice uh, these basic variances. So we need to practice them so that uh, we get used to the basic variances before we move to the advanced variances. Okay. So that's what we are going to do. Right, are there any questions on the variances that we have covered so far? Are there any questions on the variances we have calculated so far? Okay, so that is uh, where we end today. We are in today. Uh, I'll try to see if I can find a question for you that you can practice. You need to a practice question. So I'll try to see if I can find a practice question for you so that you can all practice the basic variances eh? before our next class on Thursday. So I'll try to find the uh, with basic variances so that you can try it and you can see how you fare. All right, so we'll see you on Thursday, same time, eh? same time at 12.30. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.